So you go through what 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 you were describing as a symptom of loneliness. You go through that, like posting on Facebook. Yeah, I post for Facebook for business. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, like going home at night and think. Ah, going home at night and thinking. And thinking, wow, fuck, shit, I'm, I'm alone. Like... There have been times I thought, oh, you know what? I know there was one time years back that I've had someone for uh, for a while, a year, and then I broke up with this person, and then I was in a fashion show, and it was the first fashion show I've ever attended, to, attended in Manila. That after the show, I was walking to my car. I remember it was in Rockwell. I was walking to my car and I thought, fuck, I'm walking back to my car alone, dressed up and alone. Wow. Dre- and, you know, there's no Twitter then I could post a picture, but dressed up, no, there was, but dressed up and alone. The sad part was dressed up, but dressed up and alone. That sucks. So, okay. But so many people have that. Yeah. What, like and I know a lot of people then that maybe they don't even have a, especially people that just broke up with their significant other you feel more alone because you're so used to having your significant other that when they're not there anymore and you've isolated yourself from all your friends this is unintentionally your, this question for whom <laughs> <laughs> no no I'm just saying ge- <laughs> I'm saying generally generally that's the case right and then you realize okay I want to go out who do you call? I can't answer that so much because, well, I don't know if it's rhetorical, but because I've not had that because I've always had some people around me. But you've always cause, kept in touch with a lot of your friends no matter yeah. what. Eh? No matter what your uh, relationship status is. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah, you're a very social person, so you're fine. But a lot of people may not have that same luxury. Eh? But maybe they like someone, but just one person. Yeah. And not have to deal with so many. Right. The sadness is okay if it brings you back to a certain level of happiness eventually. But you know, you can't be a good friend to everyone because not everyone's a friend on the same level. Yes. You know, so I mean, I get people messaging me. Some of them are close and I'm like, Brian, I need you right now. Okay, I'm on my way. Some people, they say that and I'm like, to me, and I've only <laughs> met them once. Maybe it's because I'm accessible. Maybe they think I give good advice. Or maybe they think they should call Coach Kristan. <laughs> me. For, for, for professional life coaching I yeah. think I think that's a difference um, <clears throat> I think if sometimes people just need somebody that they can rant to yes. and when you're just in a ranting mood I'm not the person to talk to a life coach is not somebody you rant to I said they're they're gonna probably stop you and say you're not ready for change you need to grieve or you need to go through what you're going through come back when you're ready for change because you don't even want change you just want to rant so I mean, where will they go? I mean, they can. They can pay our life coach to rant. It's just that it's kind of a waste of It's a lot of money to rant. But they're not the most rational persons at that time. You know. Oh, then hey, let's... <laughs> I'll take you. <laughs> oh, God, no, that's but they can have so coffee bad. Coffee shops. You can try there if you want. It's a safe space. You know, you know I, I'll tell you what I think the difference between the Philippines and North America is, or, or mod, modern countries are. It's this. In developed countries where everyone's so busy working, they have shrinks. Yeah. And I think they have shrinks because the social circles there are so small that when you have problems, you have no one willing to spend the time to listen to you. Yes. Unlike in the Philippines where we have a lot of time and we, social circles and, and the relationships are tightly wound that we have people to go to. Yes. Because sometimes that's all you need someone to listen to. And in the States, I think they go to their shrinks just for somebody to, to listen to them more than anything else. Who doesn't know them sometimes? Yeah. Enough. <clears throat> right. Which is a good thing. I think that's just why I think if you're in the subway and someone just starts talking to you, and my sister says, don't engage because they're going to talk to you the whole time you're in the bus because they don't, don't, oh no, they don't have anyone to right. talk to at home. No, because it's true. I find when you're in the States and if you try to move there alone, you'd feel really lonely. Because it's hard to even integrate with other people's lives because they're going to be, they're all too busy with their own lives, independent of anyone else. And that's what makes it so lonely. Unlike the Philippines, I find the beauty of this country and also the problem, but the beauty of this country is that um, we like to socialize. We like to sit down, have coffee, chit chat for hours and listen to each other's problems. I don't know if maybe that's a great form of entertainment and that's why we do it. Some people are maybe, uh, they're chismosa or chismosa in that way. But n- nonetheless, that gives us a nice buffer yeah. to be able to release all of our emotions, good and bad. A few days ago, I was in a conversation and someone asked me, what's your stake in mental health? Why are you doing it? 
Okay, for everyone that hasn't caught up to this conversation, Brian, you are going into the mental health sector. sector. And okay, why are you going into We have it? a mental health startup to bring mental health services, mental wellness services, more accessible to more people in less intimidating ways. Because it's, a lot, it's very interesting. Because you feel right now, what's the what's missing? So because I hear, I not feel up. Like, I hear right now that there's a lack of that, and there's better. They need better access. I I I, <clears throat> I, I can only say this very non-scientifically for myself because I've not had that service myself. Well, not only that, the, no, there's not much data. Also, yes, in the Philippines. So. But I don't have a personal experience. <clears throat> myself I guess or at least my immediate family <clears throat> to have that situation right I know it's also genetic sometimes mostly I don't believe that ah really I don't believe that sabi- anyway I'm gonna sabi sa akin ibang friends right but I'm just saying I don't have that experience so much of it except when certain of certain people I know right and I interact with them that way so okay so I don't have a personal grasp but, of it, but I see it of people. So you're you're basically from what you see from your own circles that there is a need for better access. Do you feel the problem is not only just better access, but maybe lack of awareness from people generally to seek um, help when it comes to mental health issues? Yes, yes. But it feels like that feels like another part of a larger thing. So the better accessibility, better awareness better support groups, bigger communities. So it's like different components. I can't tackle all of it now because I'm just starting in that sector. But I think we'll get there. Uh, I think there's a lot of great people doing what they're really good at with these things already. But I I think there's a niche that I think we can fill. Or there's a gap that we can fill very well. I think Especially so. with from a designer experience, right. human factors, design, <clears throat> creative thinking. There's a. I'm not saying this is not. I'm not talking about poetry sessions. <laughs> I'm talking about real mental health and mental wellness, uh, even medical purposes. Right, and um, this is not psychiatric. It's psychiatric. It is psychiatric. Yeah. So you're going. There will be. You can, there's so med- you're going the entire spectrum of mental health. There's psychiatrists. There's psychologists in the group. Right. You have medical directors. Counselors. Too. Yes. Everything. Yes. Oh wow. It's not. Some people thought initially it was like a, a nice space, like a Zen area, which you can. It's beyond that. It's like real access. You know, we, they can prescribe medicine. So here, can I give you my thoughts on? Please do. On prescribing medicine and as mental long as health. It's free advice. <laughs> no, it's. I, I'm actually, um, I don't believe to a certain extent in the idea of fixing somebody medic- uh, sec- chemically. Chemically, I understand. Although I'm not, uh, no, I'm not disagreeing. I, I think there is a need for that. I said there are some cases where, you know, you're so down, you do need sometimes just to, here, let, let me give you this because you just need to be able to keep yourself up in that moment but you I, and I'm sure that's what they do psychiatrists do here's something and then, but you need to go through that counseling program to be yeah. able to help you um, it's just that some are it's it's like even doctors if you have a medical problem they always say oh you're feeling this way here's a medicine done but wait what's causing that maybe it's a lifestyle a diet you know, they have to look at it holistically I and understand that's what's, I agree that agree. has to be incorporated and that's why I like what you're trying to do that's what I'm saying there you hey, go thanks <laughs> but I'm just saying I can't uh, the way, sabi ko parang whenever people ask me about it, like, well, I'm not a medical expert <laughs> in the business. We have medical directors doing yeah, that. Yeah. But I'm more an, an activator. Uh, and I appreciate that because... Um, From the outside coming in. Yes, because that is what we need right now. Now, how does somebody know that they need your service? Oh, okay. Um, I'm not sure yet how to answer that. But what I can say is, if you do know, we're ready to, we're very accessible. Right. That's the only thing I can say now. It's interesting because I've had people just a few days ago tell me, parang, have you experienced it yourself? Why are you into this thing? Ganyan, ganyan, ganun, ganun. And I'm like, I see there's a need. I see a service that people can give and a service that people need right. or, a, or an engagement. I can make the spaces happen. Right. Mostly that. You and know. you don't need to have experienced it to be able to do it. I think so, you know. I to be fair with everyone, yes. You know, so even with advocacy, sorry, I'm going to move to LGBT. Yeah. Uh, it's a bit related sometimes, but I'm going to move to LGBT like for example, um, oh, some people would tell me, 
you have you had problems with being LGBT or gay before in the past in your work or whatever? And I'm like, not really. I've never been bullied. Gano, gano, gano. Well, what are you advocating for? Uh, I'm advocating for people and everyone. I set up the LGBT Chamber of Commerce. Right. There's a lot of organizations around that are other that are tackling different aspects of LGBT advocacy, like human rights, um, trans causes, bisexual causes. And all these other. And what is the cause of the, the Chamber, Chamber of Commerce in uh, particular? To champion and celebrate the, Philipp the LGBT contribution to Philippine business. Oh, and there's quite a well, few. Yeah. 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 There's, there's quite a few very successful people that are from that community that are doing amazing work here yes. in the Philippines. We want to highlight that and celebrate that and make people understand that parang just a contribution. It's not we're not just like you on the land. Would you would you name some of the big names? I think some of the bigger, bigger, bigger names are not out. And some of the big names you know already. Yeah, yeah. These ones are always on TV and in right. news. And so I, that's beautiful. Mm, yeah. I, some people, my, some of my friends believe that the best actualization, the best level, highest accept actualization of a gay person is being out. I disagree though. Like, parang some people, parang, oh, he's not out, so he's not, you know, I mean, but no way. Parang some people prefer that and it's fine. That sorry, it's fine that they're they know their sexuality or their gender. And yet they're private they, about it. They don't want to People. make it public. But I guess. are they in denial themselves? Or well, I can't decide. I can't talk for them about that. I'm just saying, if a person prefers to not be out or not talk about it, then let's give that person what he wants. Right. If we can, it's none of our business anyway. I mean. True. True, but yeah. well, so do you think that that's still the, there are a lot of um, people are not out? Yeah, super. I bet around thirty percent of the community is not out. Wow. I'm just saying that loosely off the top of my head, and all these people I met in the last twenty years. <laughs> oh wow. There's a lot of people I met in the last twenty years. You know, everywhere. This is Manila and other countries. And okay, that's. But mostly Manila. Okay. Thirty percent. That's a big number. You know, it's funny, huh? Because I also think that the LGBT community is bigger than what everyone thinks. Everyone thinks it's a five percent, six percent, probably bigger. Uh, like, what, what do you think? Uh, the number I always uh, point at from the United States two years ago, 2016, three years ago, uh, from J. Walter Thompson, uh, 20, 51 percent, 52 or 51 percent. <laughs> okay. Hold on. Of 21 year olds and younger in the United States are not absolutely straight. Wow, that's fifty-two percent. That's over half. More than half are not absolutely straight. I'm not saying very gay, or I'm saying not super, not absolutely heterosexual. Wow. <laughs> so they're fluid, not naman gay, just fluid or basic, lesbian or bisexual. They're just fluid. Parang a person is like super masculine looking, can be into guys, can be into girls, and I'm like, oh, are you gay? Uh, I don't know, but I like this guy. He's hot. He's, and he plays basketball very well. I like playing basketball. Him. And their sexual attraction, or their slug. This is another conversation, but that's a, you need to do your SOGI, sexual orientation, gender identity, expression training. I have to be able to, I know, to, to figure that out. Uh, yeah. Okay. The chamber has that. Okay. So, uh, lgbtph.org slash SOGI. Okay, good. Uh, and anyway, th this is a test you can do for yourself. You this mean? is a small 30-minute thing that we give for high-level executives for them to understand sexuality in the current, in the present. Not them, but... In to general, to understand so that they can be better leaders at what they do. I see. There's also uh, like that online for any other kind of person, like employees, people doing their own businesses, individuals. You know, hey, you know nowadays, you know, people love doing mga tests and quizzes online and all that. So. But I also believe that uh, okay to not have labels. Fuck labels. You know. I, you know what? I agree. Fuck labels. I, I think the problem with having labels nga, no, is that once you're la labeled and you feel like you're labeled, you start to act whatever. You act on that label subconsciously. Yes. But at the same time, they also uh, equate na, oh, you're gay. You must be all the things I understand about being gay. Which is your perception, not really the yes. actual reality of what yes. it is. Yung parang, oh, Hindi ka mahilig sa pink? I don't have pink. Eh, kasi, di ba, you're gay? The person's idea of gay is like, pink. Pink. <laughs> Barbie, one, dolls. Feathers, Barbie dolls. Barbie dolls. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. That's great. I mean, it's just like, that it's a stereotype. Yeah. You know, so there's nothing wrong. But, 
So I guess to think of everyone as an individual person, that's great. And you know what? That's even beautiful because it's going to be more fun for you if you look at a person as an individual, as a person. That's more fun. Right. So not everyone is a cliche. Right. So um, here, just, day, I'm a cliche also. just on the LGBT Chamber of Commerce, you know, who gets? Uh, do you have members and how do you become a member and who would you accept as a member? Uh, all the information is LGBTVH.org, but at the same time, I will say we're, I think, one of the more out there organizations right now for LGBT advocacy in the region. We're very good about it. Uh, we just released a, 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 a research about uh, corporate diversity in the Philippines. And we found out in that research that 0% of the people we talk to, zero, none, have 0% of the Philippine corporations we talk to, have 0% have an LGBT diversity policy. No Philippine corporation we talk to, I'll say that in the, like, in the positive, will have policies for LGBT. Wow. That's zero. No one. So what sucks is you have a company saying, we, we like LGBT or we support, you know, true love or pagiging right. totoo, whatever, whatever. But, but our, have, this is marketing, huh? This is no, advertisements, huh? There's but no in policy. the office, there's no policy. And, and they should. Because, so anong nangyari dyan? It's really what you're saying is pinipirahan mo lang. Kung the idea is you're using that to earn more money, but you're not giving back to the community because you're not supporting really in business. Ah. It's majorly not cool. So that it's is marketing. part of the it's advocacy of the, the LGBT Chamber of Commerce? Uh, that is the advocacy mm -hmm. of every person. But that is something that we can highlight. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm not saying we're police of bad things. Right. But we're also highlighting good things that other companies have done. Right. Oh, wow. But the chamber, because the LGBT chamber is based on sexual orientation, gender identity, and expression. We're not like Chinese chamber, American chamber. Now it's country of origin. Right. Or, <laughs> or geography. Right. Or geopolitics. Right? We're not there. We're not the European chamber now. If you're from the Euro from Europe, then you're part of this chamber. We're not like that. Uh -huh. So, ito yung chamber na nabubuo dahil sa kung sino ang mahal mo. Yes. That's a tricky chamber to be part of. That's more fun though. We got the best parties. I'm sure. So, okay. We got the best music. Oh, wow. Okay. So, um, what's the, ano, what's, uh, what's the next step for the LGBT Chamber of Commerce? Well, I hope to be not heading it anymore by end of this year. I thought I wouldn't be doing that last year because I've been heading it for three years now. Uh, my parents say give chance to others. That's how they say it in the Philippines, give chance to others. So I think we should. I think there should be younger people who are more interested in leading things. Uh, people should have less self-doubt about leadership. And people should really want things really. And, and I don't something about Philippine modesty that I don't agree with. Uh, Which is another topic altogether. It's not progressive and it's not constructive. It is ugly and it promotes an ugly kind of behavior and you're letting people who are not doing it well do it for us and that's not cool. Uh, is that like uh, prevalent only in the Philippines this, la this modesty or is it like not even modesty is it lack of confidence? I think modesty. And or is it so you know, only modesty and self-doubt and then confidence but you know. Is it like false, uh, baka it's false modesty? Parang iba, totoong ano eh. They're, maybe they're really not confident they, eh. Yeah, I was gonna say, kasi if you're that modest, then maybe you're not, it's not even modesty. Maybe there's a lack of confidence. Maybe you really don't believe you're capable. That's something we can change. Yeah, for sure. But, you know, <clears throat> but what I'm saying in general is, if you can and if you want it, we shouldn't make people feel bad about wanting things. Right. Or going for their dreams. Or making a difference. We shouldn't be shaming people or makapala mo kapala mo kapa. Or makapala mo ka. There's nothing wrong. Yeah, kasi here, you know, in this country, you know, pag makapal mo ka mo, people, people will chastise you for that. They will isolate you. They'll make fun of you. They'll, you're right. It's like if you go for your dreams, oh, you, you, mayabang ka. But you know, I haven't gotten that, that from other people because I'm just in your face and I kid about it. Like I would enter a room like, oh, okay, let's do this now. Okay. But, but I always say, when I hire someone or get someone, are you good at what you do? Because you only work with the best. And they're like, uh, okay, no, man. no, 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 no. I only like the best. So if you're not the best or if you're not going to try for that, okay, no. uh, sir, I'm the best. 
Sure. Okay, let's see. <laughs> and I guess that's a way for them to get confident eventually if they're on their way. At least they're on their way.